I'm standing in our new propagation house. It's a high tunnel from Rimmel that we put up last fall. And it's the middle of February right now. And we're trying to, we're building some tables. And we need to get the heater put in. Um, hopefully this week that'll be done. But one of the things we needed in the tunnel was a germination chamber that would not only keep the seedlings warm, but also keep them cool because we have a problem with lettuce in the summer. Um, it's one of our weakest spots. We saw a video where they made a germination chamber out of a working freezer. Uh, I've seen a lot of people make them out of freezers that don't work because it's a great insulated space. But this was a working freezer so that we could control it in order to keep the seedling trays cool inside the freezer. So this is the freezer and we ended up using uh, closet shelving which worked out really well. And we have 11 shelves in here now, so we can fit 22 uh, trays, two on each shelf. Now the main way this works is that we have a um, Inkbird temperature controller. If you've never seen one of these, it controls heating and cooling. And the Inkbird has two plugs in it, and you plug the freezer into the plug that says cooling, and we plug our heat source into the plug that says heating. What we're using right now is a crock pot filled with water. The crock pot will turn on when it gets too cold and it will heat up the space and when it gets too hot in there the ink bird will um, turn on the cooling unit which is the freezer itself and it'll cool everything down. Now we've had this running for a few days. We've had it um, on cool nights, on hot days in here and it keeps the temperature within a couple of degrees of where we want it which is really nice because in the tunnel even in February it gets pretty warm. We're not sure if we're going to keep using the water because the water evaporates. People have told me that in a freezer there's enough moisture just in the wet trays to keep the humidity up um, in, the, in the freezer. So if that's the case we may change the water out to, to oil and that way it won't evaporate and I won't have to be putting water in every day or twice a day. The only thing I haven't done yet is I need I needed to cut off the shelves. There was a plastic unit with shelves in here. So I cut that out because uh, it stuck out too far when I closed the door. I couldn't get the trays in. So I cut that out and this is just insulation. I was hoping it was rigid foam, but it's just fiberglass insulation. So I need to find some sort of cover for that. But other than that, it's done. And we just run the plugs out the unit, hook it up to the ink bird and turn it on. There's no light in here, so for those of you who don't know how a germination chamber works, it's really just to germinate the, the seedling trays. So you have to keep an eye on them and watch them once or twice a day until you get the hang of how long it takes at a given temperature for the seedlings to pop up out of the soil. And once they start breaking the soil, you take them out and you put them on the tables out in the greenhouse so that they can get light. Otherwise, they'll get leggy. And that's basically it. That is our germination chamber, and maybe I'll do an update later on uh, once we have it up and running to show you how it works.